Yes, God, honey, it's Miss Laganja Astranja, and you're watching A Queen Who. A queen I have shared trade with would be the one and only, the Boom Boom Gun. That's right, it was Gia Gun. We were in Houston, Texas. It was a long, sordid night. And let's just say we were experimenting with sharing is caring. Munch, munch, crunch, crunch. Silky Ganache definitely has the best snacks. I like things that are hot and spicy and of course fried. Ooh, a queen who's always on time would have to be Miss Latrice Royale. She is the definition of professional and she will definitely read you if you are late. I always say if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're fired. A queen who's made me cry is definitely Sasha Velour. She didn't make me cry because she hurt my feelings. She made me cry because her art is so beautiful. It really touches me on such a deep level, and I love how she approaches drag with such an intellect behind her art. I listen to a lot of girls' music. I have to say, I stumbled upon Lux Noir London's music, and I was so impressed. She actually dropped her album before Drag Race, and it's so fun. It's got a great 70s feel, and I really love the production value. A queen who never sleeps is Tatiana. I swear to God, me and her have been out until the sun comes up. She knows how to party and have a good time. The queen I've known the longest has to be my drag mama, Miss Alyssa Edwards. I not only consider her my mother, but I also consider her a brother because I knew her long before Drag Race as Justin Johnson. I began working at her dance studio when I was like 18 years old in Mesquite, Texas, beyond belief. And I'll never forget when I first met her, she was so opposed to me. She did not understand my eccentric way of dressing, which is so wild because she's such a fabulous queen. But growing up in Texas, I think that sort of put an edge on her where she would keep drag separate from her dance studio. So when I came in in a sequin vest, ready to teach a jazz funk class, she was like, whoa, whoa, Miss Thing, slow down. But cut to a decade later, and here we are now traveling the world together as mother and daughter. Now, I think this queen has already made herstory because of her extensive profile as a drag artist, but it has to be Trixie Mattel. I definitely think she is going to go down in our history books because she really diversified herself, not only as a musician and as an author, but also as a makeup mogul. I think one of the most daring queens is Pearl Liaison. Not only did she literally ask RuPaul, is there something on my face? But she sort of quit drag in the middle of Corona and decided to travel the world in her RV, which she redid herself. And I just thought that was so daring as an artist to say, I'm gonna turn my back on this thing that really helps me get a platform and do it my own way. Another story about Pearl that I love is that when she went to Hawaii, she jumped out of an airplane. And when I found this out, I decided that I had to do the same thing because of her. So I'm really encouraged by her daredevil activities. Diabetti has the biggest heart and other parts of any queen I know. I swear to God, from the moment we met, we just instantly connected and we were really able to be vulnerable with one another. I think as queens, a lot of the times we put on our personas for each other when we're working, but when Di and I met, we were able to just be real, authentic, genuine friends with each other. And I just really love the way that she is able to love me back. I feel like a lot of queens are annoyed by my eccentricities, but Diana not only loves them, she encourages them. So I definitely consider her one of my closest sisters in the Drag Race family. Thanks for watching. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the PEG channel, and we'll see you next time. Stay sickening. Oh, crrr.